So you want a new monitor for Blender work, but you don't know which one to get. How much should you spend? Should you get a gaming monitor? And why does the Apple Pro XDR display stand cost £1,000? All of your 3D monitor questions will be answered in this video. In my opinion, when you're on a low budget, you should put all of your money into one monitor rather than two worse options. Uh, for this reason, I'd recommend getting a 27 inch monitor because I find that's a good size where your workspace doesn't feel too cramped. Uh, you also want to stay clear from gaming monitors. They might look cool, but unfortunately, the main focus of a gaming monitor is the higher refresh rate, which is not good for 3D graphics. You don't need it, and you're just gonna be sacrificing the contrast, the brightness, and the color accuracy. First, the Q Q Curio 27-inch monitor. It's not from a well-known brand, but if you're okay with that, you're getting a pretty good deal as it's a 27-inch Full HD monitor for just over 100 pounds. It has 99% coverage of the sRGB color space, although I'm not sure how accurate it's gonna be. Um, it's also quite low resolution, 1080p for a 27-inch monitor. I hope you like looking at pixels, but for 100 pounds, it's as good as you're going to get. Next, we have a Dell monitor, which is double the price of the previous monitor. However, it's got a fair bit more resolution. 2560 by 1440 is going to be a lot higher pixel density, and you're not going to be looking at pixels quite so much. It's also made by Dell, a more well-known manufacturer. So if having a more established brand is important to you, then this monitor is definitely worth it. Another Dell monitor, although we're starting to push the limit of what can be considered low budget. Still, it is 4K, so no more looking at pixels. You can also enjoy some rather optimistic marketing terms, such as feeling every beat pulse with built-in dual 3 watt integrated speakers, which might be true if you're listening through a stethoscope. I also enjoyed the rather lofty HDR display claims, although considering the peak brightness is 350 lux, I think you're gonna be a bit disappointed. For comparison, a MacBook Pro's Retina XDR display is 1,600 nits. As the last monitor was quite expensive, I'm gonna break the 27 inch monitor rule and recommend this 24 inch BenQ. Whilst I personally prefer larger monitors, if you're okay with a smaller monitor, then this could be a good way to save some money. It's actually got a pretty similar pixel density compared to the previous 4K Dell, because of the smaller screen means you won't be able to see the pixels. And again, like the previous monitor, it's still got 99% sRGB coverage. Talking of having lots of coverage, so does the rendering service for iCofounded. Greater Blue Render Farm has 100% coverage of all your rendering needs. It's simple, easy to use, and it offers the lowest prices in online rendering. So sign up today and spend less time waiting and more time creating. And I hope you appreciate that genius marketing line because it's the best one we've managed to think up in the past seven years. Anyway, this is when things get more interesting. Now we can start to look at high quality 27 inch monitors, dual screen displays, and even 32 inch monitors. Now this isn't deja vu, I know I'm suggesting the same monitor again, however this time I'm suggesting it in a dual display configuration. Whilst I think a 24 inch monitor is a bit small as your main display, if you've got two of them, then that's much more usable. This 27 inch 4K monitor gives you excellent color accuracy with 100% sRGB coverage. It also comes pre-calibrated so you can make best use of the Pantone certified display. This would also be a great candidate for a dual screen monitor setup because 27 inch monitors aren't so big that two of them will completely take over your desk. The first gaming monitor. This 32 inch 4K monitor still has some slightly dubious HDR claims but it is significantly more color accurate. Not only do you get 99% sRGB coverage, but it can also do 95% of the larger DCI-P3 color space. The extra screen size will also make your Blender workspace feel less cramped. And of course, if you're also into gaming, then this monitor makes sense as a great dual purpose option. Now this is where things get really exciting, but also really expensive plenty of high quality, large options available. Now this has got to be the best monitor on this list just in terms of the specs. Incredible color accuracy with 100% sRGB and 98% DCI-P3. This ASUS monitor can even cover 84% of the Rec 2020 color space. 
but that might not be so useful to you if you're a Blender user. If you're a video editor wanting to do HDR content, then this monitor is great. But for Blender users, I think some of the specs are a bit overkill. Now out of all of the monitors on the list, this is my favourite. Like the ASUS ProArt display, it has 98% DCI colour space coverage, and also, I just like LG monitors. The iMac that I'm using, that has a display that's co-developed with LG, if you've ever looked at the 5K Ultrafine, that's basically an iMac monitor. And I've also got an LG uh, SM9100 TV. So yeah, definitely a fan of LG monitors. Uh, the other benefit of this is that it's a widescreen monitor. There are a few reasons to pick a widescreen monitor rather than a dual monitor setup. First, and probably the biggest reason, is you don't have to deal with that annoying bevel center line down the middle. You've also got more freedom to resize windows, and if you happen to watch a YouTube video that's properly cropped into widescreen, it will fill up the entire display. And finally, if you also do lots of video editing like I do, then it's really nice to have a wide monitor and have a really wide timeline, because you don't have to scroll sideways along the timeline so much. Now if you like the look of the LG, but it's a bit too expensive, then it's definitely worth having a look at this BenQ monitor. It's the same size as the LG, but it's not quite as colour accurate, and it's also a fair bit lower resolution. But it's more than £300 cheaper. This is definitely a great all-round monitor, and like the LG, it's a widescreen, so it has all the associated benefits of that as well. So, out of all of these monitors, which would I choose? If I was on a limited budget, say under £500, then I would definitely go for the two 24-inch BenQ monitors. You have the significant advantage of being able to buy one first, and then as soon as you have the money, buying the second one. And really, if you went any cheaper than this, you'd have to settle for monitors that weren't colour accurate or that were far too small. So two 24-inch BenQ monitors, solid low budget choice. Now, out of all of the 27-inch monitors, the 4K ViewSonic is my favourite. So if I was going to have one monitor, I'd definitely have that. But if I was going to look at spending all of the money to have a dual screen setup of two of those ViewSonic monitors, I think I'd have to consider either the LG Ultrawide or the BenQ Ultrawide. Now, especially if you're like me and you have a hybrid of 3D work and also video editing, then I'd definitely recommend looking at a widescreen monitor if you can afford it. Just make sure you don't go too low resolution because you don't want to be seeing pixels. And finally, why does the Apple Pro Display XDR stand cost a thousand pounds? Because it's pretty and because it's Apple.